Well, it's official. The uh, the Biden administration has decided to go the Supreme Chancellor into Emperor route. Uh, they have decided to take the Grand Republic of these United States and turn them into the Galactic Empire. <laughs> or at least that's what it appears <laughs> in Joe Biden's latest speech from Philadelphia. We're going to talk about it today. I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is the show where we are unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and theological issues from a biblical worldview. We do that because Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead. And he said the Bible's true. So he knows what he's talking about, obviously. And if the Bible is true, then we're wrong about whatever the issue is if we disagree with the Bible about it. And so we want to look at uh, issues from a biblical worldview. This, this was the... Um, historic world uh, worldview of the founding fathers, even though they weren't all right about uh, biblical and theological things. Um, they def definitely had a biblical worldview in the way that they approached the world, and this is why our country exists today. So uh, we want to we want to break down this speech. Oh my goodness. Uh, dystopian doesn't really describe it very well, um, but it definitely had a really eerie authoritarian <laughs> feel. I felt like I felt like his 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 whoever was doing the decorating was probably just was really going for this like a uh, banana republic sort of a uh, of a feel to this. It it it's pretty creepy. Um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, just the setting in the background, but then then what he what he said in his speech. We're gonna break it down. I I I tried to pick out sound bites from the speech. To respond to and it was it was just so bad there was just so much i wanted to respond to that i said all right we're just gonna play the whole speech we're gonna play the whole speech and we're gonna stop and we're gonna pick through it piece by piece i just think it all needs to be picked through all of it right you if you heard the speech you know you're just like oh this is so bad this is so bad we're gonna do that we're gonna slow it down we're gonna pick through all of it so if you're watching on fis by the way point of view uh, goes all over the place it's on right america media on on fism tv on uh, K-Star Conservative Radio Network. However you're watching, just know if you're watching on FISM TV, you're watching that you're the first person to see the Point of View episode when it comes out. FISM TV, you're the first person to see it. But it's broken up into 20 uh, to, to 30 minute blocks, really 28 and a half minute segments is our show. So on FISM. So we're definitely not going to fit this into a 28 and a half minute segment. The, the, the speech itself was 24 minutes. So just know this will, there'll be a part one, a part two, and part three. And so for everyone else, you'll, you'll probably watch it all together or hear it all together on K-Star Conservative Radio Network. And, uh, and in that case, you're actually going to be hearing the whole thing with little breaks in between where I say, all right, that's the end of the show. Join us next time for part two, and then we'll go right into part two. So I just wanted to just give that little uh, side note before we jump in. Uh, we're going to jump into the speech. Before I do, let me let me just give you, uh, in case you're you're new to this, we've we've talked about this verse a lot, but this this verse gives us reason to care about this as Christians, right? As Christians, we should care about what happens in our government, political, uh, um, the political reality of, that we live in is important. It is not the most important thing. The most important thing for Christian is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus died on the cross for sins, that we can have eternal forgiveness and eternal life uh, by repentance and faith in Christ. But that's not, you know, while that's the most important thing, uh, our government is important. We're told to pray for our government leaders, that they would let us lead a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty. And I've got this verse in, um, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter uh, 29, verse 7. Where God is giving a principle to the to the people of Israel who are carried away captive into Babylon. And he tells them while they're there that they're going to be there for a while. And since they're going to be there out of their land for a while in someone else's land in Babylon, he says this to them. And seek the peace, verse 7, seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof ye shall have peace. He's saying you're going to be there for a while. It's not your land. But while you're there, seek and do whatever you can to, to provide for the, for the peace and the prosperity of that, of that city because that'll be good for you. And uh, while our final citizenship is in heaven, right? Our citizenship is the kingdom of God. How, uh, while we're waiting for that, we should seek the peace of the government where we are now. We should seek what's best for our government. So um, I think that's, that's a very noble thing for us to be uh, interested and concerned about politics and political things. 
And so that's the preface by which we say this is this does fall under what is the biblical worldview on these things. And uh, this is actually really, this is concerning. Because remember that the first Christians, they, um, you know, they actually were, they lived in authoritarian society in, in Rome. Rome put them to death. They hated Christians. It was a war on Christianity. Um, and there is a war on Christianity now, but not in a physical way in America. There is this desire to stamp out Christian views and Christian values. Um, but there's no ability to actually physically act on it, put, throw people in prison and stuff for that. Um, but if the people who want to, to war against Christianity get to a place in the government where they can attack Christianity in a physical way, shut down churches physically, throw, throw pastors in prison, they will certainly do that. So this is concerning from an authoritarian standpoint. One of the reasons that, that uh, America has been so welcoming to Christians is because it's been free and, and people who hate Christians can't do anything about it, right? They can't stop us. Um, and, and this is concerning the authoritarian nature of the speech. But without any more discussion about it, let's let's start start playing it because we'll never get through if we don't get started. Um, here is Joe Biden. He's in, by the way, he's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Independence Hall where the Constitution was signed. And um, he feels that this is the very appropriate place to... to uh, <laughs> give the speech. I think it's absolutely inappropriate. Um, let's let's just get it started here. My fellow Americans, <clears throat> please, if you have a seat, take it. I speak to you tonight <clears throat> from sacred ground in America, Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is where America made its declaration of independence to the world more than two centuries ago, <clears throat> with an idea unique among nations, that in America, we're all created equal. This is where the United States Constitution was written and debated. This is where we set in motion the most extraordinary experiment of self-government the world has ever known. With three simple words, we the people we the people these two now what's interesting here is <laughs> as i mentioned look at look at the background here this is really creepy i mean you got these two shadowy guards behind him and, and the american flag has never looked so creepy before i mean i i am an, a patriot i love america i think it's great <laughs> i love the american flag in most settings but <laughs> that is about the creepiest way that i've ever seen the american flag displayed and you see this like eerie hellish <laughs> red glow behind him <laughs> and this it's just i'm sorry this is just not this this is not a good the look is bad, all right? We're not dealing with, like, the details of, of the speech yet. But th this looks pretty bad. And I'm really, really shocked that they show the audience. It just doesn't make sense that they would show the audience here. Um, let me go. I'm going to show you the clip here where they had the audience. Look at that. There are three rows of fold-up chairs. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's about 20 people in a row, and there's three rows of them. So I, it, to me, it looks like there's maybe a hundred people here, maybe a hundred people. You can even see where the rows end. If you're, if you're listening on, on, on the radio and, and not being able to see this, I'm just saying there, it's, it's in a semicircle. There's three rows of chairs in a semicircle. And then behind that are, are, you know, cameras and, and, and some of the press, but of the people actually invited there besides the press that and this might actually be press even the one sitting down just taking notes uh, reporters this is like nobody i mean you would think that for a speech with the president of the united states it would be rather easy to get you know thousand people to show up or whatever i mean there's prop there's probably less than a hundred people there as a matter of fact <laughs> I mean, <laughs> point of view has a bigger audience than the president of the United States, um, at least in person. This is this is really sad. This is really sad. Um, this is already the image. I'm surprised that they even showed the people here because 
it, it, it shows it, it makes it look like he doesn't have any support. The optics here just aren't good. Okay, let's just let's just say that and and move on. Uh, it's already looking <laughs> creepy. All right, um, let's continue. New documents and the ideas they embody, equality and democracy, are the rock upon which this nation is built. They're how we became the greatest nation on earth. They're why, for more than two centuries, America has been a beacon to the world. So let's let's, let's skip forward just a little bit. All right, here, here we go. We must be honest with each other and with ourselves. Too much of what's happening in our country today is not normal. Too much of... Now, I wonder what he's about to say. Too much of what's happening in America today is not normal. I agree. <laughs> All right, listen. We have, we have women saying they're men... And saying that it's a hate crime if you don't agree. We have men saying they're women. And it's a hate crime if you don't let them wrestle against women and women's wrestling. Men. And if you don't call them she or her, you're hate, you hate them. It's a hate crime. Like, that's not normal. Okay? Um, I, I'll just come out and say it. Men marrying men is not normal. Okay? That is not normal. I mean, for thousands of years of human history... This has not been normal. Okay. And, oh, we, we have things that are going on in America that are not normal. I, I agree with that. I wonder what he's about to say are things that are not normal. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans <laughs> oh. represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Okay. First of all, <laughs> extremism, <laughs> unfortunately, even if Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans <laughs> was extremism, Extremism is normal in America. It's actually rather, rather normal. There's the KKK has been in America for a long time. I'm, I don't support the KKK at all. I'm just saying that groups that are extreme are rather common in America. This is, this is rather normal, unfortunately. Um, oh, is Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans, are, are they not normal? Are they extremist? Well, what is MAGA? I mean... It's this sort of derogatory thing, according to, to Biden, but MAGA stands for Make America Great Again. Like, they want to make America great. Now, whether you agree or disagree with how they want to go about making America great, it is super normal to want to make America great. They, they love their country, and they want it to be great. And in their minds, they want it to be as it was founded. I mean, that, that's their desire. They, they don't want to change America. They don't want it to be communist. They don't want it to be socialist. They want it to be what it was founded to be, right? So, you know, disagree with how they go about trying to get there. But is that extremist? I don't think that's extremist. Those who want America to be great, again, are extremist. That doesn't seem... All right, well, let's, let's hear him out. Let's hear him out. Let's hear what he has to say about why this group is extremist. He's, he's going to try to going to try to get, convince us, so let's see what he has to say. Now, I want to be very clear, very clear up front. <clears throat> not every Republican, not even the majority of Republicans are MAGA Republicans. Not every Republican embraces their extreme ideology. I know, because I've been able to work with these mainstream Republicans. But there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven, and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. By the way, that's who he's talking to, right? He's not trying to convince Trump supporters not to, you know, not to love Trump. He's trying to convince people who uh, go along with, uh, you know, who voted for Trump but weren't like big lovers of Trump. He's trying to convince them uh, that they, they should be ashamed of themselves, that they should distance themselves from Trump. Um, that's really the goal, it seems, of the speech. And uh, I think it's silly because I think those those people have always been sort of level headed and are going to support people who have good policies and try not to, you know, jump onto a bandwagon. Um, so you're trying to get them to jump off of a bandwagon. They're not on a bandwagon. So, it, you know, I, I'm not sure what this speech is accomplishing other than being divisive, divisive with a with a dark red hellish background and and imposing guard figures <laughs> It doesn't seem to, I, I'm just wondering how this accomplishes 
what he says he wants to accomplish, which is unifying the country. Uh, doesn't seem to be doing that. But let's 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 hear him out. And that is a threat to this country. These are hard things. But I'm an American president, not a president of red America, blue America, but of all America. Except MAGA America, apparently. <laughs> except, except, those who love, except those who love Trump. It's like, everybody, let's turn and let's attack people who like Trump. This, this is even worse when you realize that, that Trump is the opponent, was his opponent in the last election, and will it possibly be his opponent in the next election. You realize that the current president is using his position as president to tell people the whole country should turn on and be against anyone who supports an opponent of me. It's literally, literally what he's saying. This is scary. This is creepy. When you realize what he's talking about, he's saying this guy opposes me. And so everyone who supports him needs to turn on him, right? That's scary. Now he's going to try to provide reasons why we should all be against this as anti-American. But keep in mind, Joe Biden is biased. <laughs> right? This is not, this is not a... This is not an unbiased opinion that he has here. This is this is the guy who ran against Trump in the last election and may very possibly run against Trump in the next election. <laughs> this isn't the, an unbiased opinion of a guy who just said, uh, I'm really concerned about America and uh, I really I really just, for the sake of democracy, we need to all stand against Trump and anyone who supports Trump. No, you are literally the one who stands to benefit from Trump failing. You stand to benefit more than anyone from Trump failing. <laughs> you stand to, to, uh, to, uh, what's the opposite of benefit? You stand to, to reap the, the worst results, um, from Trump succeeding. So <laughs> you are the least unbiased opinion <laughs> on this subject. You are the least qualified level-headed person to talk about this subject. Joe Biden is, he is literally the most biased person in the world <laughs> on the subject of Trump. And so he's the one who should be telling America what they should do with, with MAGA Republicans. That doesn't really make sense. It doesn't quite jive. But let's, let's let him continue. And I believe it's my duty, my duty to level with you, to tell the truth, no matter how difficult. Right, right. You just want to tell the truth. I mean, it's just my duty to tell the truth. I have no interest in this, right? I'm not, it's not like I'm going to run against him in the next election or I just got done running against him a couple of years ago. No, I have no personal interest here. It's just my duty to tell the truth, right? It's not because he's my political opponent or that I stand to gain another term uh, if I can defeat him, I think, or, or the fact that, you know, that you, none of that. It's, it's nothing political here. I just want to tell you the truth. Sure, Joe. Sure, Joe. We we, we believe you, Pre Mr. President. We believe you. All right. No matter how painful. And here, in my view, is what is true. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. Literally all that MAGA... <laughs> All MAGA Republicans can do is talk about the Constitution. Like, this is their big thing, right? Um, this but conservative Republican. Now, we got to define MAGA Republicans. Obviously, uh, there, there are, you know, you could say you could you could divide up Trump supporters into just general conservatives. Most general conservatives are in support of Trump, but they aren't like Trump's the only option. They like also, they also like DeSantis. They, they like Ted Cruz. They like other options for the possible next president. Um, uh, but then you have the people who are um, Trump only, right? You know, no one but Trump, you know, they're absolute lovers of Trump. S uh, many of those uh, would be uh, believers in the uh, idea of QAnon. By the way, a lot of my good friends do believe that. I think they're wrong. <laughs> I think that's been proven, but you know, you know, th that tends to be something that some of them believe. Um, but the, the point here is that once you define who the MAGA, MAGA you you're really narrowing it down to the conservative base of the Republican party, the conservatives. 
is is really seems to be who he's talking about here. And they're not against the Constitution. They're the only ones in the in the political realm who care about the Constitution. If you care about the Constitution, you become a conservative. Like you are like that's that's sort of the thing that defines conservatives. And conservatives by and large have supported Trump, though that not exclusively, but you know, hey, he's he's doing conservative things and, and accomplishing good things for the conservative agenda. So um, saying that MAGA Republicans don't love the Constitution, like literally the, the Democrats feel that the Constitution is a living, breathing document and needs to, you know, it, it needs to be, you know, changed with the times. And if you talk to a, con a Democrat about the Constitution, they're going to say, oh, yeah, but the Constitution's bad because it's got, you know, um, the uh, uh, slaves are uh, a third of a vote or, or whatever. I think it's a, maybe a quarter of a uh, you always get this negative attitude about the Constitution from the Democrats. So is is that a threat to our de democracy, Joe? Is that are the Democrats a threat to our democracy since they they don't like the Constitution? Because it seems like the MAGA Republicans actually do. I mean, at least they give lip service to loving the Constitution. They talk about it a lot. They certainly um, they certainly know the Constitution well. Most of them. As a matter of fact, that's kind of why they were upset. On January 6th is because they felt that there was a constitutional way to uh, not affirm the the um, the the result of the uh, what the states were trying to affirm in in who won the election, um, and they thought there was a constitutional way to do that. That's why they were all um, there on January 6th. So uh, they don't care about the constitution. That's that's clearly false. Like that is clearly a false claim. They they love the constitution. You may disagree with their take on the Constitution or whatever, but that's not at all the position of MAGA Republicans. Like, not at all. This is a false claim from somebody who, who has reason, really good reason, to make false claims about the Republicans. So, right, why should we think of you as a sort of non-biased source here? I guess it's good that there's only about 100 people in the audience. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize... They don't believe in the rule of law. Wait a minute. Who are the who are the people who are who support the police? I mean, that's that's the that's the Republican Party, by and large. Even more when you get to the conservatives, you know, they're big in support of the rule of law. Remember what happened in in twenty twenty when there were riots and and looters and and they were burning things down. What did Trump do? He said, no, no, we need to, the law enforcement needs to enforce the law and, and stop this rioting and looting and destruction of property. Guess who was against that? Well, it was the Democrats, of course. The Democrats said, no, no, we need to burn things down. We need to do this. We need to be uh, uh, civil, un we need civil unrest because that's, because the only way to have change. Well, now here's a Democrat saying that it's the MAGA guys who are against the rule of law. Well, that's absolutely nonsense. But he's going to try to defend it. Here's the evidence he's going to bring. Uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about it as it comes. The will of the people. They refuse to accept the results of a free election. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for this. All right. Why why do why do MAGA support? Why why do Trump make America great? I'm not going to say a MAGA. Why do Trump make America great, guys? Um, not accept the results of the election well because they're well for a couple of reasons number one we know for a fact that there was cheating in the election right okay there's some of it right now there's debatable how much there was whether it changed the outcome but we know that well we know that there were dead people that voted we know that some of that happened the question you know when I, when this goes up oh fact, fact check you know um uh, there wasn't. Uh, uh, there was no, no reason, no evidence to say that there was enough to change the election. That's true. Okay, there is no evidence to say it was enough to change the election, as far as I've been, I've seen. But it certainly happened. And the question is, since we know it happened, and since we know it happened on a rather large scale, the MAGA people are upset that it never was investigated to find out if there was enough to change the election. Like the fact that nobody wanted to investigate it. They swept it under the rug and they just confirmed the results. Even though they knew there was cheating, they knew there was cheating on a large scale, and it's possible that it could have been enough to change the results, and it was never investigated. So you're right. There is no evidence that, you know, that that's solid evidence to say 
the election was stolen. The problem that the MAGA people have is that there could have been and there was never looked into. And they didn't they didn't want to overturn the results. They wanted someone to look into it. They wanted it to be investigated before anything was confirmed. That's what they were upset about. That's what they still are upset about. And um, of course, they feel that the reason is because Trump really won and that this was all swept under under the rug, um, which I mean, I guess they they probably have, um, you know, feel uh, that is is fair. And, and I, 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 I'm not going to say I disagree or agree. I'm just saying this is th this is their position. They feel that that an investigation should have happened and no investigation happened. And that's why they're upset. If an investigation had happened and it had come back, nope, there, there just wasn't enough cheating to, to make make a difference, we wouldn't have this. The reason we have the problem of people claiming the election was stolen is because there was an allegation that seemed credible that the election was stolen and it was never investigated. Still hasn't been investigated to this day and all the evidence has pretty much been swept under the rug because it doesn't matter anymore. Now we have a president, right? So... That's frustrating. You're going to have this in a country when you have a free and fair election that is questioned by a large group of people, a in giant large group of, of people question the election and no investigation is made to satisfy their concerns. You're going to have people who then are going to continue to question the election until an investigation is made to satisfy their concerns. So it, this seems actually very democratic and very in line with America's principles. Uh, if you're watching on FISM TV, uh, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us where we continue uh, tomorrow uh, at the same same time, same place on FISM. And uh, we'll see you next time on Point of View. All right, for the, for the rest of us, we're going to go ahead and continue. If you're just joining us on FISM TV, uh, w welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. We've been going through the, uh, the the speech, the wonderful authoritarian speech of Joe Biden. And we've just sort of been breaking it down. So far, he's made claims about uh, saying that our democracy is under threat by MAGA Republicans, make America great, people who want America to be great again, because they support Trump. And the reason, he says, is they're against the rule of law, which is certainly not the case. Um, they, they hate the Constitution, which is certainly just, it, this, these are just factually wrong. Um, this is not the, the attitude or the position of, of Trump or any of, or any of his followers that I know of. Maybe there, you know, there's extremes on, on every, every, in everything. Um, and uh, he's also said that they want to overturn, uh, that, that they won't accept the results of an election. And we've, we said this um, in the last episode, if, if, you're, uh, if you were here last time that this is absolutely just <laughs> this is this is kind of nonsense this is this is silliness because uh because well because because a, a concern was raised by a large i think it was something like 70 percent of republicans felt like the election that there was election interference 70 percent of republicans felt this way after the election and no investigation was ever made to satisfy their concerns you know, when there was the concern in uh, in uh, Florida, right? The the hanging chads, you know, um, back with George Bush and, and all that. You know, an investigation was made to satisfy those concerns so we could move on and be sure that we had the right president, right? That never happened in this election. That's the problem here. The problem is there was no investigation. The problem is not that MAGA Republicans are hanging on to it. They never had their concerns addressed and sat uh, in any sort of satisfactory way. There is no evidence. That's true because there was no investigation. You do an investigation. You say there's no evidence. Now we can, now we can move on. But there's been no serious investigation. Nobody would look at it. The, the states wouldn't look at, the, at it. The court wouldn't look at it. Nobody. They tried to get the Senate to, to look at it. They wouldn't look. Nobody would look at it. Oh, no, we're just going to accept it. And that's the reason why there's concern. And uh, whether or not the election was stolen is not the issue. The, the fact is that we, we, will, ne we will never know or, or never have those concerns satisfied without an investigation, a thorough investigation into it. And so Biden is, is complaining at them for, for not accepting it, but they have legitimate concerns that have never been addressed. And if you want to give an olive branch, you know, if you want to say, all right, listen, we'll, uh, we'll bring you 
we'll, we'll, uh, um, we'll, we'll give you a peace offering. We, we, want it. we want to have unity. If you wanted unity, you'd, you'd let an uh, investigation um, into the election be done. But Biden doesn't want to do that. The fact that he doesn't want to do it is, is a bit telling. Uh, also, the fact that he has zero approval rating and has about 100 people in his, you know, monumental historical speech from Philadelphia uh, kind of shows you a little bit about uh, what we're dealing with here. So um, he, he's, he's never really been a very loved president. Um, and if he did genuinely fairly win the, uh, the election, which... He, he may have. We don't have proof one way or the other. Uh, if he did, it, it is a head scratcher how he did <laughs> because he, he was never really, um, he's never been incredibly popular. Um, so anyway, that's where we are so far in the speech. Let's, let's continue on. And they're working right now as I speak in state after state to give power to decide elections in America to partisans and cronies. Now, <laughs> he's probably talking about redistricting, which the Democrats do whenever they can. Um, th this is something Democrats do, Republicans do. You have to do it. You, you have to redistrict. And of course, you're going to try to district in such a way that's beneficial. Um, partisans are everyone in politics. Everyone in politics is partisan. L literally, Joe Biden is a partisan politician. He is a Democrat, right? He's not nonpartisan, right? He's actually very nonpartisan. He's incredibly partisan. So, but he's saying, oh, they're giving power to partisans to do this. Like, like partisans like you, Joe? Yeah, of course, partisans are, anyone who makes any decision in government is doing so with partisanship. <laughs> that's, that's part of it. Um, so yeah, and, and both sides do this. Both sides redistrict to try to make the districts better for, for, for the outcome of the elections. Um, whether that's right or wrong is really a whole other conversation, but this is not something new. This is not something against the constitution. They certainly can do it. And uh, that's not stealing or rigging an election. Um, you know, a bunch of dead people voting, that would be rigging an election. Um, Republicans, MAGA supporters are not trying to do that. Um, so, you know, that's, that's very different. So he is complaining at them <laughs> for complaining about the results of an election while also accusing them of trying to steal an election, which is kind of complaining about the results of a future election. Like, this is so inconsistent, it's, it's really not funny. It's just not even funny. Powering election deniers to undermine democracy itself. MAGA forces are determined to take this country backwards. Backwards. Is that such a bad thing? Like MAGA does mean make America great again, right? Is it such a bad thing for the for America to go backwards to to when it was great? I mean, <laughs> just think about this for a second. All right, <laughs> America under Trump, booming economy. Just you know, China was scared of us. North Korea was scared of us. Um, Russia didn't know what to think. Didn't want to invade Ukraine because we. I don't know what's going to happen if if I do. Like. Um, ISIS was there. It got destroyed under Trump. I mean, listen, <laughs> is it really so bad to go back to that? I mean, j since Joe Biden has been president, what has gotten better in America? I'll wait. You, you think it through. Think about one thing that's gotten better in America. Less mean tweets? I think not. <laughs> I think I think not. No, I think that, that, that social media has become more of a, of a slime pit. Um, just Trump's not on it. Okay. Trump's not on it. But that was, that what happened while Trump was still president. He was taken off of Twitter. Like since Joe Biden has become president, what has become better in America? What wouldn't, why wouldn't you want to go backwards a little bit? Go backwards a few years. I think we need to go backwards even further than that. I think we need to go back to our founding really. But that's a, going backwards is, look, Joe, you're standing in front of, of, the, of Independence Hall where the Declaration of Independence was signed talking about our history and saying Republicans want to take us back to this. Uh, yeah, that's what conservatism is. We want to take us back to our founding. Uh, to We think that would be a wonderful thing. And, and he's using that as if it's a bad thing. I'm not sure why. To an America where there is no right to choose, no right to privacy, 
No right to contraception. No right to marry who you love. No right to choose. He's talking about choosing to murder your children. No right to privacy. Uh, oh, privacy in your own body. So if, if you have a child, as long as that child's still in your body, mother, you can murder that child. You have the right to privacy. You have the right to choose to murder children. Like, they want to take us back to that. Look, that's not just MAGA Republicans. That is the official position of the entire Republican Party. Now, Biden just got done earlier in the speech talking about how, you know, he's the he's the president of of the whole of the whole party. He's the president of of Democrats and Republicans and um, and just not MAGA Republicans. And then he says, but they want to take us back where we have no choice to shoot to murder our own children. We don't have no choice in abortion. Uh, yeah, we don't want you. We readily admit. All Republicans should readily admit we are against you having the choice to murder people, right? We, we are definitely against. We also are against you having the choice to rob people. We're against you having the choice to uh, embezzle uh, funds. We, we are against you having the choice to endanger uh, people's lives. Uh, there's a lot of laws actually um, that we are, we are for, which actually keep you from choosing that thing or else, you know, you'll be punished. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's perfectly reasonable. I don't think that that's anything extreme at all. You know, have, wanting laws against murder. They promote authoritarian leaders and they fan the flames of political violence. They promote authoritarian leaders. Like, <laughs> like Joe Biden's not that. He's not an authoritarian leader. No, look, he's... <laughs> Is standing in front of the hellish background with his with his uh, navy bodyguards there. I think that's navy. Is that navy? I don't know. Um, no, he's not an authoritarian leader. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Joe Biden, um, who has said nothing about the authoritarian leader uh, Muriel Bowser, uh, who is the mayor, I think, of D.C., and uh, recently said that all children who go to, who go to school in DC uh, have to be vaccinated, period. Every child, private school or public school. Now it is actually a law that children have to go to school. So now she's saying you are by law required to go to school and you are by law required to get a vaccine. Who's the authoritarian leader here? I, I think it's the Democrats. I really feel like this is a, this sounds like a speech against the Democrats. But then he targets it at MAGA, the MAGA people. This is exactly what the MAGA people are upset at Democrats for. It sounds like someone's trying to sort of flip the narrative. Um, I don't think it's going to work, honestly. Just, just, just to be honest, I don't think it's going to work. That are a threat to our personal rights, to the pursuit of justice, like to the people. rule of law, to the very soul of this country. They look at the mob that stormed the United States Capitol on January 6th. Oh boy. Oh boy. Brutally attacking law enforcement. Not as insurrectionists who placed a dagger at the throat of our democracy. Okay, all right. Let's let's pause here for a second. He said, "Look at the mob that attacked the Capitol on January 6th." Uh and brutally um brutally uh attacked police is that what he said yeah i think that's what he said um there were millions of people at the capitol who would have called themselves maga supporters make america great again trump supporters millions of people at the capitol millions of them guess what not one of them brought a gun to the capitol not one of them brought a gun. They were not trying, they were not inter insurrectionists. They were not trying to take anything over. Or else they were just really stupid. <laughs> I mean, not one of them brought a gun. All right. There were millions of them. And by the way, I was there. I wasn't, I didn't storm the Capitol, but I was there on the steps of the Capitol. And I could see millions of people down the National Mall who had no idea what was going on at the Capitol. They had no idea, no clue. They were not a part of it at all. They were 
quote unquote, MAGA Republicans, but they were not at all involved in this. So you really can't paint all MAGA this way. Um, there's a lot of speculation, really good speculation. And me having been there covering it from, from a, from a um, journalistic perspective, I will say that there is really good reason to believe that there was infiltration in, in the ranks of those millions of people of, uh, of uh, other 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 groups that were not MAGA friendly that wanted to to make it look like MAGA was causing trouble. There's there were certainly people who came in body armor, uh, looking, you know, planning to do something nefarious, but not planning to take over the capital. Right? They had body armor, but no guns. They had no, you know, right. So there was there was some of that, but that wasn't connected with the group of people. They actually were at the Capitol before Trump finished speaking. There's a lot that went on there that people don't get. But um, if, if you were there and, and you were kind of watching the timeline of things, because I was I was actually there and I was covering it from a news perspective, um, the, none, of, <laughs> none, none of the characterizations really line up. But, you know, there's a narrative that, that the Democrats want to spin here. Um, there were some MAGA people who got caught up in it, you know, that, you know, oh, yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to push back the police. And there was some pushing and shoving of the police. But the the police handled that pretty easily. I mean, <laughs> they didn't get anywhere. The people who pushed and shoved the police were, yeah, they, they didn't, they didn't get very far. Uh, I saw some of that and I, you know, it's like, oh, it's, it's not going to work out for you. They got tear gassed. They got pushed back. They got arrested. I, you know, this, this. You know, um, I was not in the Capitol. I'm, I'm talking about what I saw from outside of the Capitol. Um, in the Capitol, one person died. That person was shot by the police, not brought, didn't bring a gun to, to, to shoot the police. Okay, this was not an insurrection. All right. It was stupid, stupid actions and some taking out anger by a few people, probably about 30 people that I saw that were actually taking out anger on on the police, like pushing and shoving them, but there was no actual um, insurrection acts going on here. It, it was just some people being pretty stupid and uh, others trying to rile them up to be stupid, um, which who may have may or may not have been MAGA supporters. The point is, out of millions of MAGA supporters, there may have been a hundred or so that did stupid things on January 6th. And you're going to paint all of, you, you say you don't want to paint with a broad brush, you know, oh, it's not all Republicans who are MAGA supporters, but it's all MAGA supporters who wanted to storm the Capitol. Well, that's not true. That is, I, I can tell you from being there and watching that that is 100% not true. I was in the crowd. I was interviewing people. I was talking to people and they were like, what's going on? What are they doing? What are they going in the Capitol? What, what are they stupid? What, what are they tear? Are, are they attacking? Like, this is the attitude of the people. Like, what are these people doing, right? Um, so there were some people who were doing stupid things, but uh, that's not that's not all MAGA. Like th 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 absolutely not. That that's kind of silly. Um, but no, now it is because why? Because again, Biden is the person who had stands the most uh, stands to gain the most from tearing down Trump, and the least from Trump succeeding. Right? He, he's going to be hurt the most from Trump succeeding. So. Trump, Biden is not a non-biased non source here. He is the most biased person in the world to speak about Trump and Trump supporters. He's the one who stands to gain the most from Trump failing, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge Trump supporter. I supported, I, I voted for him. I would probably, I would prefer Ron DeSantis, honestly. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm just saying the things that Biden is saying are false. They're, they're just categorically, absolutely false and uh, actually apply more to Democrats than they do to Republicans. But they look at them as patriots, and they see their MAGA failure to stop a peaceful transfer of power after the 2020 election as preparation for the 2022 and 2024 elections. What? What? What this tells me is that it sounds to me like Democrats are planning to do to do violence in the name of MAGA, no matter what happens. If, if, if any time a Democrat wins, they're going to do violence in the name of MAGA, right? Put put MAGA hats on and go out and do violent stuff so that it looks like oh these guys are terrible. Um, 
there may be terrible people who are Trump supporters. As a matter of fact, I'm sure there are. I'm 100 percent sure there are. Um, but there are terrible people who are call themselves Christians. There are terrible people who call themselves Democrats. There are terrible, terrible people all over in every corner of this world. All right. Um, but it's 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 kind of silly to paint with such a brush. Um, and it's actually alienating and divisive, not unifying and help helpful, uh, Mr. President. They tried everything last time to nullify the votes of 81 million people. Yeah, <laughs> 81 million people. 81 million. This is this is their problem, right? How the heck did 81 million people want to vote for this guy? <laughs> like, how is that? Like, this is the biggest thing, the b biggest hurdle to jump over. Like, this is like really okay. Well, but but here's the thing: MAGA people don't want to nullify votes. They want an investigation to see if those votes were real. That's what they want. That's what they want. And if you had given it to them, they wouldn't be concerned about it today. But they are concerned about it because it was never given. They don't want to nullify. That's not their desire, right? That's a that's a straw man. That is not the desire of the MAGA Republicans. Their desire is to um, is to have a free election. They just feel like it wasn't a fair election, right? So satisfy that concern, right? That's what you need to do. You don't, not just tell them that they're they're wrong to be concerned about it, right? That that doesn't that's not helpful, Mr. President. What would be helpful is to satisfy that concern by by um, by having an open, honest investigation into it. You know, that would be helpful. Uh, this is not helpful. This time, they're determined to succeed in thwarting the will of the people. That's why respected conservatives like Federal Circuit Court Judge Michael Ludwig has called Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans, quote, a clear and present danger to our democracy. But while the threat to American democracy is real, I want to say as clearly as we can, we are not powerless in the face of these threats. We are not bystanders in this ongoing attack on democracy. There are far more Americans, far more Americans from every, from every background and belief who reject the extreme mag ideology than those that accept it. Now, there are more Americans who would not call themselves MAGA than those who, who would, right? Um, but <laughs> to, ex to reject the MAGA ideology, you'd have to, you sort of have to define what MAGA ideology is, right? If it is making America great again, conservatism, like that's pretty well accepted. If, if, if you call it conservatism, there's less pr people who would say they accept it. But if you if you define it and say that, you know, hey, look, we want to go back to the founding of the country. We want to, you know, want this to be a government of the people, by the people, for the people, that kind of stuff. People generally accept that. As a matter of fact, Biden is actually showing that they accept that by standing in for this speech in front of Independence Hall, talking about how great the Constitution is. This is this is the ideology of conservatives, of the right. So, you know, by and large, they, they reject it. They don't reject the things that you've just said. The, you know, the, you know, the things that you're complaining at, at the MAGA for, uh, they don't reject them just because they're your political opponent, opponent, Biden. Um, uh, sorry. And folks, it's within our power, people. it's in our hands, yours and mine, to stop the assault on American democracy. I believe America is at an inflection point. One of those moments that determine the shape of everything that's to come after. And now, America must choose to move forward or to move backwards, to build a future or obsess about the past. Should we really move forward in the direction we're going, though? <laughs> that's the question. Like, I feel like moving um, a couple years backwards would be super helpful. How many people feel like their life was better before 2020 than it is now? I mean, everyone, everyone, everyone thinks that. Nobody thinks the other way. So why are you talking about going forward? <laughs> why are you saying, why aren't you talking about restoring, going back? He's talking about, oh, MAGA Republicans want to go backwards. That's a pretty good thing. That sounds pretty good. Forward isn't always good, right? 
Now, get this. Biden wants to go backwards, too. He wants to go back to an age when Roe versus Wade is still in effect. He doesn't want to go forward into without you know, not having Roe versus Wade. He actually wants uh, now laws to be made to to you know basically reinstate Roe versus Wade. He wants the Congress to pass abortion laws. Uh, he wants to go backwards, right? You see, the word backward and forward can can be used on both sides, right? The question is, what's actually better for the country? It's not wh whether it's backward or forward, but backward sounds bad, so it's being used here in the speech. It's all, all just political jar jargon to try to get you to agree with one, one thing or, or another. To be a nation of hope and unity and optimism or a nation of fear, division, and of darkness. MAGA Republicans have made their choice. They embrace anger. They thrive on chaos. They, they embrace anger. Literally, this entire speech sounds angry to me. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing uh, democrats are the ones who supported chaos in 2020 when they said that oh it's it's a fiery but mostly peaceful protest these protests should be con uh, you know they they should be allowed to continue they're just you know they're just expressing their anger you know um you know who wants who really wants chaos well it's <laughs> the people who are who are not in power who want chaos against the people who are in power this this is this kind of goes both ways, but I think it's a whole lot less in the uh, Republican side than it is in the Democrat side. We live not in the light of truth, but in the shadow of lies. But together, together we can choose a different path. Together. This is the, one of the most divisive speeches I have ever heard in my entire life. Now, I'm not exactly an extremely old person, but this is the, like the most divisive speech I've ever heard. And he's talking about, but if we can only be together, you are literally dividing the country right now, saying that everyone who is who supported Trump is a, is a MAGA guy who wanted to storm the Capitol when almost everyone who supported Trump did not support uh, storm the Capitol. Millions of people voted for Trump. Only about 100 of them tried to get into the Capitol. And even those people didn't hurt anybody didn't hurt a single soul damaged a little property it was bad shoved around some police that's wrong they shouldn't have done that but they didn't hurt anyone right and you're trying to then paint all millions of people who who like trump as terrible insurrectionists because a hundred people did something really stupid and really wrong that didn't hurt anybody yeah i'm sorry that that doesn't fly that narrative doesn't actually make logical sense. Yeah, there's no logic there. We can choose a better path forward to the future. A future. Because if the future is anything like now or, or more of what we have now, I don't want to go to the future. I'd rather go to the past. To be honest with you, I'd, I'd much rather go backwards. I don't see why that would be a problem. Why is it bad to go backwards? A future possibility, a future to build and dream and hope. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of building to do. Building back better. What you're doing is you're tearing down more. Uh, like there, <laughs> this whole building. Oh, we're, in the future we have more to build. Yeah, because you've just been tearing stuff down for the last two years. Um, all right. Yeah, let's just let him continue. And we're on that path moving ahead. Are we? <laughs> I know this nation. I know you, the American people. I know your courage. I know your hearts. And I know our history. This is a nation that honors our constitution. We do not reject it. Yeah, that is like the rallying cry of, of the conservatives. You've already talked about MAGA conservatives. Conservatives, that is what they're all about. The constitution, returning to the constitution, going backwards. You're talking about going forward instead of backwards to the constitution. And saying, oh, but we love the Constitution. You just can't use the Constitution to say, we love the Constitution. You actually have to know it. In what way do you support the Constitution? You're against the Second Amendment. You're, you're against the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You're against all the principles of the Constitution. And uh, saying, yeah, but we're the Constitution. You can't. The Democrats are not the party of the Constitution. Like, everybody knows that. And you, you really can't pull the wool over our eyes there, Mr. Biden. Guys, we're going to wrap it up for this episode. If you're watching on FISM TV, 
That's all the time we have for this episode, but we're not done. Let's see. I've got, uh, oh, I've got about 15 more minutes of the speech. I don't know how much we'll get through, but we're going to try to do it, wrap it up in the next episode, just do three episodes on this, but we will see. I really just want to, I want to wade through this. I think this is helpful. So we'll see you next time on FISM. Everyone else, we're going to carry over and continue the discussion. All right. So if you're just joining us back here on FISM, thank you for joining us for the third episode of this series where we're walking through the speech uh, that Biden gave, the really creepy, dystopian, authoritarian speech in uh, at, uh, at <laughs> Independence Hall last week. And I just think this is super educational to actually think through the points that are being made in this speech. Because these speeches are tend to... The, the goal is to be emotional. Like that's the goal of these speeches. We've got to instead be careful, logical, and, um, and think through the, these, uh, these things. And I think that will be, I think that will turn out to our benefit in, in a great way. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's go back to the speech. So far he's been saying, that uh, Republicans, MAGA Republicans, are a danger because they hate the Constitution. They are uh, they hate the rule of law. They want to undermine the election. Again, as I've said, um, if any of that's true, uh, it is that they question the results of the election. But the reason they question it is because there's good reason to question it, even though there's no evidence to say the election was stolen. There's a lot of a lot of uh, reason to think it could have been. And no investigation to find out whether it really was. And so that is a concern for, for um, Trump supporting Republicans who want to make America great again. And uh, if an investigation was had taken place or would take place, it would really calm a lot of those concerns. But, um, you know, Biden, the guy, the, the man of unity, doesn't seem interested in, uh, in going that route. So it be what it be. All right, let's continue the speech, see how far we can get on it. This is a nation that believes in the rule of law. We do not repudiate it. <clears throat> Unless you're a Democrat, you know, where, you know, Black Lives Matter can go and just destroy things. And how dare Trump send the, F send, uh, send, uh, the FBI out there to stop them, right? How dare Trump send the military out there to guard federal buildings when Black Lives Matter is destroying stuff, right? How dare he do that? Because, you know, the Democrats are the party of the rule of law since when? Like, that is absolutely not true. Nobody believes this stuff. Nobody believes the Democrats are a party of the rule of law. But I think Biden here is trying to flip the narrative. He's trying to flip it around and trying to steal the momentum that's clearly not on, in his favor. And I, I, don't, I don't know. I just feel like if he wanted to do that, um, the dystopian hellish landscape behind him is not helping. Just not helping with that narrative. That he's trying to spend. This is a nation that respects free and fair elections. We honor the will of the people. We do not deny it. Well, yeah, okay. The, the position again. This is straw man. The position of of Trump supporters is that they feel that the election was stolen. They they don't feel like this is the will of the pe people. They're not trying to deny the will of the people. If this was the will of the people, they wouldn't have an issue. Their concern is that it wasn't the will of the people. So calm that concern because that is what they're concerned. They're not trying to just steal an election. They're afraid that an election has been stolen. And that's why they're so worried about this, right? So you want to calm them down. Then what you need to do is do an investigation to calm them down. Um, I'm not saying the election was stolen. I'm just saying that's how you deal with people who have a concern about the election being stolen. You don't just come out and say, oh, they're terrible for, for having concerns. No, you would say, okay, well, we're going to calm that concern by doing a full investigation into this open, transparent, so you can see exactly that there is nothing going on here. Um, but of course, that's really not something he wants to do. And this is a nation that rejects violence as a political tool. We do not encourage violence. We are still an America that believes in honesty and decency and respect for others. Patriotism, liberty, justice for all, hope, possibilities. We are still at our core a democracy. And yet. All right. This is a nation. 
this is a nation that rejects violence as a political tool. Uh, yeah, I agree that it's not a political tool, but this is a nation that started when we re refused the orders of the king and things got pretty violent. Okay, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying that, right? There was a war that started this nation. So um, <laughs> you're standing in front of Independence Hall where they literally were going to be hanged for writing this Declaration of Independence and they knew that writing it meant absolute war with, 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 uh, with England and they did it anyway. So, no, I'm not advocating for any kind of... I'm just saying, that doesn't make sense. Like, that's not logical. Is that, you know, oh, we're a nation that never that never participates in violence. No, we have, a, we have an army. We have, we have, we fought to start the nation. We fought to protect our nation. Like there's always violence in our nation. <laughs> there always has been. Um, this is how nations work. This is how governments work. So, um, so that's a little silly. Um, he also says, let me see if I can back this up just a little bit so I can get that again. Uh, let me pull it back up here. In honesty and decency and respect for others, Patriotism, liberty, justice for all, hope, possibilities. We are still at our core a democracy. We're not really a democracy, right? We are a democratic republic, meaning that we vote to elect representatives who represent us. And, and then they make the laws, right? And, and they, um, they take care of the government. Democracy would be we vote about everything. Republic would be people are selected for us. We are a democratic republic, meaning we vote to select the representatives who go and do all the work for us, right? So we're not a democracy. We're not a republic. We are a democratic republic. That's actually really important. So that's the way it was designed on purpose. That's how it was designed by the people who stood in the building behind you at Independence Hall. And um, no, we're not still at our core a democracy. No. Although there is democracy as part of, of our government. There's no question about that. And yet, history tells us the blind loyalty to a single leader and a willingness to engage in political violence is fatal to democracy. Blind loyalty to a single leader and willingness to participate in violence is fatal to democracy. Well, okay. Blind loyalty to a single leader, if it's the will of the people, is still democratic. <laughs> it's, not, it's democracy. If that's what they want, if, if, they, if the people choose a leader that they are blindly loyal to, that's not fatal to democracy. That's, that's democracy. That's what happens in a democracy. In a democracy, you're going to have people who are sometimes stupid. And when the majority of the people are stupid, they choose stupid leaders. This happens. This is what happens to a democracy. It falls when the people fall. Um, so, still, it's not fatal to democracy. That is democracy. It's part of democracy. Um, being wi willing to participate in violence. Well, again, our founding fathers behind, you know, in, in the building behind you were willing to participate in violence. I'm not saying we should be. I'm just saying that's just not actually true, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to say that we should be violent. As, as Christians... We should not be violent. Christianity says we are not going to participate in violence against our government. We'd rather our government kill us than participate in violence against our government. Now, if our government, you know, our, like our local government, our, our state, were to rise up against the federal government, then we'd, we could, you know, we could decide which government we're going to follow and we could fight in that war if they were, you know, if, for instance, in the Civil War, right? In the Civil War, uh, brothers fought against brother. That, that was from a Christian perspective, that was permissible, even though they were fighting against government because they were following a government, right? So just saying from a Christian perspective, we don't, we don't endorse rising against government. We, we don't endorse that from a Christian perspective. I, I don't believe that's found in scripture, um, right? I'm just saying <laughs> the, this is what the founders did. The founders said, all right, we have a local government here. We have a, a government over there in, in England we're going to follow our local government, our local charters, and we're going to, as a government here, um, stand against against Great Britain. But even they didn't want to do individual rising against the government. No, it was, look, our government here, we're going to form a government here, and it's going to rise against. So 
yeah, these types of things happen. So it, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense as far as who we are as Americans and, and who he's representing. Um, it's not fatal to democracy for there to be a willingness to participate in violence. Uh, if it's if it's defense, de defense of democracy takes violence. I mean, that's why we have a military. So it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. For a long time, we've told ourselves that American democracy is guaranteed, but it's not. We have to defend it, protect it. With violence? <laughs> With violence, we have to do it. Because <laughs> violence is fatal to democracy, right? No, part, de defense is part of violence. Um, defense can be violent. Um, violent defense is part of love, actually. If, if, if I love my wife and someone breaks into my home and is trying to rape and kill her, I will be violent because I love them. And that will be defense. That'll be defense, right? So defense is part of violence. Stand up for it, each and every one of us. That's why tonight I'm asking our nation to come together Unite behind the single purpose of defending our democracy, regardless of your ideology. Unless it's, unless it's the ideology of the MAGAs, because that's what we're doing. That's what he's saying is we're going to defend our democracy against those who support Trump. No matter what your ideology is, you have to at least hate Trump supporters. That's that's crazy from the man who stands to benefit politically the most from taking down Trump. He's telling everybody, we have to stand against Trump. Everyone in this country has to stand against my political opponent. That's, that's, that's creepy. And that's scary. That, that's not how, <laughs> that, that's, that's not how a, a American president should be speaking. Like, for the sake of our country, we all have to band together and stand against the guy I hate, the guy who's my political opponent. Opponent. Yeah, that's that's pretty creepy. That's that's pretty creepy to hear that come out of out of his voice. All call by duty and con oh, by the way, there's uh, you, you see on the screen there are seven people and a lot of empty chairs and a few people behind them. They're taking pictures. Seven people in that shot. So that's a nice shot to show how big the audience is. Conscious to confront extremists who put their own pursuit of power above all else. Democrats, independents, mainstream Republicans, we must be stronger, more determined, and more committed to saving American democracy than MAGA Republicans are to destroying American democracy. So MAGA Republicans, MAGA Republicans, are not committed to destroying American democracy in their minds, whether they're right or wrong. I'm not talking about their ideology, whether it's right or wrong right now, okay? I'm just saying, in their minds, they are trying to preserve democracy, right? And you, you, you haven't really addressed that at all, Joe. You're ignoring that, being divisive instead of unifying and trying to turn the entire country against your political opponent without actually addressing their concerns. So this is, this is scary, wrong. And of course, <laughs> he has a appropriate background for this. We, the people, will not let anyone or anything tear us apart. Today, you're literally trying to tear people apart here, Biden. You're literally not listening to an entire segment of the population, 50% of the population practically, who voted against you. Actually, probably a lot more, but that that's neither here nor there. The point is, you're not listening to a, a, a huge portion of the population that voted against you and your approval rating is in the toilet, and you're saying, "Yeah, but we all need to, you know, band together and, and hate the guy who's who opposes me." Um, why? MAGA Republicans didn't storm the the Capitol. A few MAGA MAGA Republicans stormed the Capitol, but by and large, of the millions who were there, almost no, like 0.01 percent of the people there stormed the Capitol. So you can't just paint them all as bad because they stormed the Capitol. Oh, they won't accept their election results. Well, they have reason to think that there was cheating. We know there was some cheating. Was it enough to make a difference? We don't know because there was never a, a, an investigation done. So there's, there's you know, like, 
they have concerns about whether our elections were, were held appropriately. They are actually concerned about preserving free and fair elections. That's their concern. Whether they're right or wrong is not the issue. The point is that's their concern. So you're painting them as evil because they're concerned about the integrity of our elections. Like that's, that's not unifying. That's not saying, okay, you guys are concerned about this. We're going to do an investigation. We're going to prove it to you that this was all good. We're going to calm your concerns down. None of that. There's no olive branch. There's no look for unification. There's y'all are wrong if you don't get behind to support me. And if you don't get signed behind to support me, then, you know, we all need to band against you. Well, this is just not going to work, Joe. Your, your approval ratings in, in the toilet. This is just not going to work. People are not going to just get behind and support you because you say, every, you know, if you don't, I'm, I'm going to sick the whole country on you because most of the country doesn't support you, Joe. There are dangers around us. We cannot allow to prevail. We here, you've heard it, more and more talk about violence as an acceptable political tool in this country. It's not. It can never be an acceptable tool. So I want to say this plain and simple. There is no place for political violence in America, period, none, ever. Ever? I mean, th this is how the country started. Right? I'm not, again, the Christian view is not political violence. That's not the Christian view. That's not the Christian perspective. We're not for insurrections or anything like that. But <laughs> that is how the country started, right? So let's not let's not be, you know, ridiculous about this. Okay. Yes. Like there is a place for it in America. That's how America began. Literally, you're standing in front of an independence hall where a very violent proclamation was made. And people signing that knew that they would die. And many of them did die for signing the Declaration of Independence. Uh, they knew that they were starting a war. There was political violence that was taking place. Um, by the way, who was encouraging people to picket outside of the homes of the Supreme Court members when they when they found out that they were going to rule on uh, against overturning Roe versus Wade. Like, who was encouraging that? That was the Democrats. Oh, but there's no place per, for political violence. I agree. There isn't a place for political violence, at least not in the mind of a Christian. A Christian should always um, follow their government, even if, it, even if it kills them, unless they're, of course, told to do something against the Lord you know, and that's, that's a separate issue. I don't think that's happened yet. Um, but to say that there's no place to ever, I mean, like, look, what, you know, what, what about Nazi Germany? Germany was that, was there a place for, for violence there? I mean, should people have stood up and said, no, I'm not going to kill those Jews. I'm no, I'm not going to turn in those Jews. Yeah. I mean, obviously there is like extreme scenarios where violence is good. And if those scenarios ever came to America, obviously we would want that to not happen, right? I mean, so this is painting with a broad brush in order to try to make, in order to try to make it look like there's this terrible thing going on. I don't know of MAGA Republicans. I don't know, and I do know many of them. I, I'm not one. I wouldn't consider myself one. I do know many of them. I don't know any of them who want to start an insurrection. None, zero. Maybe there are. I'm sure there are. You know, there there are some in every camp, but I don't know any that do. So. We saw law enforcement brutally attacked on January the 6th. Brutally attacked? I mean, yeah, they got pushed around a little bit. The only person who died was a Trump supporter shot by law enforcement. Um, and, well, she was in a place she shouldn't have been. Absolutely. So um, I don't feel like she should have been shot. But look, she was where she wasn't supposed to be. That was that was wrong of her. Um, other, other, not her, but other... Um, other men on January 6th were pushing and shoving the police. And that was wrong. They shouldn't have done that. I told people, I was there filming it as a journalist. And I told people, don't do that. Don't do it. Don't shove the police. This is not, this is not right. This is not okay, guys. Plus, it's really stupid. <laughs> Those guys have guns and you don't. I mean, don't, don't do this. And um, a couple people did. I probably saw about a total of 30 people pushing police around. That's not brutally attacking, okay? That, <laughs> that's not really what happened, all right? We've seen election officials, poll workers, many of them volunteers of both parties, subject to intimidation and death threats. And can you believe it? Well, I mean, you were death threatening, uh, the Democrats were death threatening our, our uh, Supreme Court justices. So, I mean, you know, 
tit for tat, I guess, um, give and take. Uh, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying, look, this is this happens. This is part of politics to make this huge evil, you know, this one big evil in America as someone who's doing the same thing that you do. It seems pretty hip- hypocritical there, Joe. FBI agents just doing their job as directed, facing threats to their own lives from their own fellow citizens. On top of that, there are public figures today, yesterday and the day before, predicting and all but calling for mass violence and rioting in the streets. This is inflammatory. It's dangerous. It's against the rule of law. And we, the people, must say, This is not who we are. Calling for violence in the streets. (laughs) Democrats have literally said, if if, if you find one of those people from the Trump cabinet, you better go out there. You better scream at him. You better yell at him. We need violence. I mean, this is the things that Democrats actually said about Trump supporters. And this is not who we are. Well, no, it is wrong. You're absolutely right. That's wrong. I don't know any MAGA, MAGA people who are, you know, um, calling for violence. I don't know of any. None. I really don't know of any. If you know some, let me know. I, I'm against that. But I do know of a lot of Democrats who've done that. <laughs> Maxine Waters. I mean, look, this is um, this is very common among Democrats to call for violence against their political opponent. You're right. It's not not who we should be, but it kind of un- unfortunately is who we are. And I, I'm very sad to say that. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't be pro ex, uh, pro ex, pro insurrectionist. Just say it, Bo. <laughs> Just say it there. And pro American. They're incompatible. We can't allow violence to be normalized in this country. It's wrong. Pro resurrectionist and pro America. Like, the founding fathers were resurrectionists. I mean, not, I'm not, we, Christian, the Christian pers- perspective is not to be resurrection. Uh, um, resurrection. Yeah, we are, we are going to have resurrection. Res, <laughs> insurrection. Okay. I'm having a Joe Biden moment here, guys. Uh, the Christian position is not to be insurrectionist. Absolutely not. I'm not, this is wrong, guys. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. But, <laughs> You know, that's not who we are. I mean, I, that's kind of how we started, right? Isn't it? That, that's why he's standing in front of the Independence Hall, isn't it? We each have to reject political violence with, with all the moral clarity and conviction this nation can muster. Now, we can't let the integrity of our elections be undermined, for that is a path to chaos. Look, I know polish, politics can be fierce and mean and nasty in America. I get it. I believe in the give and take of politics, in disagreement, in debate, and dissent. We're a big, complicated country. But democracy endures only if we, the people, respect the guardrails of the republic. Only if we, the people, accept the results of free and fair elections. Only if we, the people, see politics not as total war, but mediation of our differences. Democracy cannot survive when one side believes there are only two outcomes to an election. Yeah, so, so that's what Democrats are known for, right? Politics to Democrats is mediation of differences. We just want to come together. Yeah, we want to just mediate our differences. Nah, no, that's not, that's not how Democrats see politics. Um, oh, you <laughs> see. It's only, only MAGA Republicans see politics as total war. I mean, no, like, listen, there's no side in politics thinks that this is about mediating differences. It probably would be a better way to look at it in, in many cases. But honestly, if something's wrong, it's wrong. And I don't want a mediation. I want it to look if abortion is wrong and it's murder, then it's murder. I don't want a mediation of differences. I want that to, I want murder to be outlawed, Right. And that's what democracy is about. We don't, we are voting because we have an opinion on subjects and we want that opinion to be represented in the Congress, right? That's why we vote. So no, that's not just, it's not just a MAGA thing. Either they win 
or they were cheated. And that's where the MAGA Republicans are today. That's not what, that's not, that's not where they are. That's not what they think. They are concerned that it wasn't fair, that it wasn't, they, they're actually concerned about that because they're not sure if there will ever be free elections again. That's their concern. Now, I can't calm that concern down. I can't tell them, oh, no, it, it was, it was free and fair. All I can say is, yeah, I guess there's some good reason to think it's possible that it, that it was, you know, that it wasn't fair. Uh, if there was an investigation into this, we would know. We don't know. So sadly, that concern hasn't been resolved for a lot of the MAGA people. Okay? That just is what it is. That, that, that's the case. If you want to fix the problem, you're going to have to do an investigation. They don't understand what every uh, patriotic American knows. You can't love your country only when you win it's fundamental oh just forget all of the all the democrats who said that if trump won they were going to move to canada right <laughs> just forget all that <laughs> to respect the rule of law and the institutions that were set up in this chamber behind me only if we respect our legitimate political differences i will not stand by and watch i will not the will of the American people be overturned by wild conspiracy theories and baseless evidence-free claims of fraud. I will not stand by and watch elections in this country stolen by people who simply refuse to accept that they lost. Yeah, we kind of covered that. Kind of covered that a lot already, so I'm not going to respond to that again. The most fundamental freedom in this country, the freedom to vote and have your vote counted and be taken from you and the American people. Look. I By the way, it's not actually the most fundamental freedom in our country, the freedom to vote. The most fundamental freedom is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, right? The freedom to vote is not the most fundamental freedom in our country. Um, the most, um, as a matter of fact, when our country was originally founded, not everyone had the freedom to vote. That was just like the people who, who signed the Declaration of Independence behind you there, Joe, um, they didn't think that that was a fundamental freedom for every person. They just didn't think so. They thought the people who were investing, the people who were landowners in the country, those were the people who should be voting. It should not be every single person, people who aren't paying taxes, people who aren't uh, invested in the future of the country, shouldn't be part of the voting, of the people voting. So that wasn't their concern. Their concern wasn't everyone has to vote. Their concern was the people who are paying the money and are paying the taxes and who are the landowners and all that, those are the people who should have a say in the government that they're paying for, right? If they're funding the government, they should have a say in it. That was really the goal. That's why, that's the, by the way, whether it's right or wrong, that's why women weren't given the right to vote. It was head of household because it was like, well, you all own property. So you get together and decide for that property, who's, uh, who's the voter, <laughs> right? The head of household. Um, so, that that's the reason right that's sort of the mindset that they have whether right or wrong right it's just not what biden wants you to think he's rewriting history and trying to tell you this is normal it's not it's really not how history has been um throughout all of time so this is not what he's at, at all the the picture that he's trying to paint is absolutely not true all right well welcome back uh, if you're watching on fism tv we are continuing our coverage of Joe Biden's speech, and um, so far it's been abysmally bad. Um, so far, we, we've we've kind of gone through um, the majority of the speech, but um, over the last three episodes, this is the fourth episode, and, and definitely the last. I'm not going to do another one on the speech. It, it'll get old, but I, I'm trying to point out, first of all, the speech is rather creepy. Um, he is he's sort of has this hellish red background with uh uh with with these two guards <laughs> standing behind him and and uh, only about probably i'm estimating about 60 or 70 people in the audience that, that you can see in the camera and he's talking about it it seems to me like he's setting up this this great crisis right because why let a crisis go to waste he's setting up a great crisis that he's going to solve the crisis is those who support trump Trump supporters are the problem. MAGA. MAGA Trump supporters, he says. Trump supporters are the big problem in America. And we have to band together to stop this problem. 
Trump supporters support violence, he says. They won't accept um, uh, the results of an election. They won't uh, – uh, they, they are for insurrection, all this. Um, this is just simply not the case, right? Um, Trump supporters, while there were some of them who, who stormed the Capitol, they didn't do so violently except pushing and shoving some police officers. Um, the, the millions of people there, almost none of them, only about maybe 100 or so of them, actually tried to storm the Capitol. Most of them just stood by peacefully doing nothing, right? Just saying, what's going on, right? Didn't even know what was going on, most of them. Um, and uh, so they're not for insurrection. This is not the position of people who support Trump. There might be a few of them who do, but that's very, very rare. Um, it's not a big problem. Um, obviously, it's a serious problem if there are those who believe that, but you know, that's, it's not a big, it's not a popular problem. Um, and uh, they aren't against free and fair elections. They just, they, in their minds, they feel that the election wasn't fair, right? And so, you know, um, I know that, that you do feel that it was fair, Joe, or, or at least you, you know, you want us to think that you feel that it was fair, but um, they feel that it was not. So the problem here is that their concerns haven't been addressed um, and, uh, you say, well, there's no proof to say that it was, it was, um, it was not fair. Well, there is some, um, evidence to indicate that it pos that it's possible that it was not fair. Right. And that has caused a lot of concern for Trump supporters, right? What, what needs to happen is there needs to be an investigation that shows that, okay, this was fair and that will really calm most of this. And that, that would be the gr best way to address this, Joe. If you really want to unify, you say, all right, we're going to do an investigation into this. Calm your nerves about this because I know what you you guys want is a, a free and fair election. And I appreciate, you know, your 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 passion for this. However, um, we're going to show you that this was true. So we're going to go ahead and do an investigation. That would be great. That would be the way to answer this. And he has, has he's just not, he's not going to do that. Um so instead, he's going to paint everyone who's concerned about free and fair elections as people who are against free and fair elections, um, right? So he's kind of trying to flip the narrative. Anyway, that's what's happened so far. Here's, um, here's him as he continues uh, his speech. We are, we're getting there. We're almost done. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Throughout our history, America's often made the greatest progress Coming out of some of our darkest moments, like you're hearing that bullhorn. So he's got about 70 people in front of him. He's not, a, not like a big crowd. And you can hear, off in the distance, a protest <laughs> to Biden. <laughs> Somebody on a bullhorn. And by the way, protesting is a beautiful, wonderful part of American history and American democracy. Like this is a beautiful, glorious part of our history the the fact that protesting takes place this is this is just great guys this is really good stuff protesting right peaceful protesting right but this is this is how um you know women got the right to vote right uh, like um all throughout history we've protested the, we've protested the the abortion industry and hey look we we finally brought awareness to problems you bring awareness to problems by protest this is a wonderful good thing and democrats have participated in it many times but here biden is saying that we have come through the darkest moments in our history like the bullhorn the darkest moments in our history are people who protest no that's a wonderful part of american history protesting throughout our history america's often made the greatest progress Coming out of some of our darkest moments, like you're hearing from that bullhorn. Our darkest moments, like you're hearing from that bullhorn. Do you realize that in Independence Hall, where President Biden is, when he's giving the speech, right behind him, they wrote the Declaration of Independence, and they wrote the Constitution. In the Constitution, what do they say? The right of the people <laughs> to... Uh, to um, to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances shall not be infringed. Like what that guy's doing is wonderful, is exactly the democracy that those people in Independence Hall wanted to create. 
They wanted to create a democracy that could be challenged. They wanted to create a government that could be challenged by the people. They, the power should not all be in the presidency. And here's the president with the with the red glow and the guards and the he's saying this is the darkness that that's challenging our 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 country. It is those who stand against me and shout at me with a bullhorn. No, that's a wonderful part of our country. Whether a Republican or a Democrats in the in office, we should always have protesting. This is a good thing. Now, peaceful, right? Peaceful protesting, absolutely. But protesting, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful part of our democracy. I believe we can and must do that again. And we are. MAGA Republicans look at America and see carnage and darkness and despair. They spread fear and lies. No, they want to make America great again. <laughs> America was certainly better <laughs> before Joe Biden became president. There's really no no doubt about that. I mean, America has definitely gone down. Um, whether it's Joe Biden's fault, you know, Joe Biden would obviously argue that it's not. But there's no question that America was better before he became president. So, um, you know, you you see darkness, right, and despair. Joe Biden in this speech has been giving us all this darkness and gloom and despair about the MAGA Republicans. So, Oh, but all they can do is paint people with this evil brush. That's exactly what you're doing, President Joe. Like, this is exactly what you're doing, is painting people with an evil brush. Lies told for profit and power. Now, I've already detailed many of the lies and mischaracterizations that Biden has told for profit and power in this speech. Listen, he has the most to gain from Trump being, from everyone in the country turning against Trump, and he has the most to lose from every in the Trump, everyone in the country turning to Trump, right? This guy is the least unbiased voice on this matter. Oh, but they're telling lies for profit and power. Literally, you have power and profit if if you can get everybody to turn against Trump. Like that's wonderfully power gives you a, you know a lot more ability to retain your power. So. This doesn't, this seems to fall on deaf ears coming from the guy who stands to benefit the most from attacking his political opponent. I mean, he's, he's calling for attacks, you know, for, for a turning against his political opponent here uh, with words that say, oh, but they're using lies to, you know, to, <laughs> to, to gain power. Uh, besides the fact that, of course, Biden, the Biden family has always used power. We know this um, for a fact, has always used power to sort of, um, increase their profit margin. Um, you know, uh, Hunter Biden is, is, is a good example of that. Um, but Trump, on the other hand, when he became, when he got to the presidency, he, he, he didn't get more money. He actually lost a lot of money. He didn't take a paycheck. I mean, it was not about fun money, right? Profit. Um, matter of fact, he, he lost a lot of profit doing that. Um, so there, there, at least, it, at least we can say that wasn't his motive. But I see a different America, an America with an unlimited future. An America that's about to take off. I hope you see it as well. Just look around. Well, I hope it's about to take off because the last two years has been going down, right? We are careening towards a cliff. And we don't think it take off soon. It looks pretty bad. So I think and hope it's, I really hope that it is about to, to take off. I really do, Joe. I, I, I honestly do. But the policies that you've implemented, there's no, there's no logical reason to think that the policies you've implemented will help America take off. None. None of your policies. All of your policies have been towards like, um, you know, green energy and uh, like, uh, you know, leftist ideas that aren't designed to make America take off. They're designed to rein America in. So the idea that America is about to take off, if it does, it would be in spite of your policies. Your policies aren't designed, um, Joe, to, um, to make America take off. I believe we could lift America from the depths of COVID. So we passed the largest economic recovery package since Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And today, America's economy is faster, stronger than any other advanced nation in the world. We have more to go. I believe we could build a better America. So we passed the biggest infrastructure investment since President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And we've now embarked on a decade of rebuilding the nation's roads, bridges, highways, ports, water systems, high-speed internet, railroads. 
These are all things, by the way, that, that Trump did um, so or wanted to do. significant gun safety law since President Clinton. I believe. Which is actually against the Constitution after talking about how the MAGA guys are <laughs> against the Constitution. Um, so, you know, don't pay any attention to that. We could go from being the highest cost of prescriptions in the world to making prescription drugs and health care more affordable. So we passed the most significant health care reform since President Obama signed the Affordable Care Act. Okay, health care reform doesn't help um, reform the actual cost of prescription drugs. That's the problem. Um, prescription drug cost is the problem. And uh, who, who, let's see, who dealt with that issue? Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. That was Trump. That was Trump who did that. <laughs> and I believe we create, we could create a clean energy future and save the planet. So we passed the most important climate. Saving the planet doesn't make America take off. So this has nothing to do. Already he's told us this has, this actually has nothing to do with making America take off. Initiative ever, ever, ever. As a matter of fact, climate initiatives always um, rein America back in, saying you can't produce more than this certain amount of emissions and all that. Uh, uh, economically, climate things are actually going to hold us back economically. Whether they're good or not, that's not. I'm not talking about that right now. Uh, we've talked about that on other places of the show. I'm just saying, um, economically, they're bad for, for the country, economically. The cynics and the critics tell us nothing can get done, but they're wrong. There is not a single thing America cannot do. Not a single thing beyond our capacity. We agree, we but it just the, the, the policies you're easy. enacting aren't going to help us do that. But we're proving in America, no matter how long the road, progress does come. Uh, progress towards what, though? That's the way. Look, I know the last year, few years have been tough. But today, COVID no longer controls our lives. More Americans are... So, see, COVID never controlled our lives. <laughs> the government used COVID to control our lives, right? I mean, right? COVID never, COVID never knocked, you know, never knocked on my door and said, I'm sorry, sir, you can't go to work today because I'm here. No, no. The government said you can't go to work because COVID's here, right? COVID never controlled my life. The government did. Now, whether it was right or wrong, shifting, shifting and, you know, trying to shift the blame here the control of our lives was not done by COVID. it was done by the government working than ever businesses are growing our schools are open millions of americans have been lifted out of poverty millions of veterans once exposed to yeah tell that to the most liberal state in the country uh california where they literally have the homeless overrunning the state if americans are being lifted out of poverty it is not the result of liberal policies Every, everywhere, the most liberal places in the country, everywhere where liberalism is just unchecked and unfettered, you have the most poverty in the country. I mean, it looks like a third world country where liberalism is left go unchecked. So, I mean, this is not something that, that can be credited to liberal policies, uh, Democrat policies. The toxic burn pits will now get what they deserve for their families and their compensation. <laughs> American manufacturers come alive across the heartland, and the future will be made in America. I mean, that'd be good, right? That would be wonderful if that's the case. I'm suspicious that that will not be the case uh, based on the policies, but we don't have time to get into all that. So, No matter what the white supremacists and the extremists say, I made a bet on you, the American people, and that bet is paying off, proving that from darkness... The darkness of Charlottesville, of COVID, of gun violence, of insurrection. We can see the light. Light is now visible. <laughs> Why? Why? Because because you said so. Because light is visible. Um, what what about the dark? <laughs> what about the darkness of the Black Lives Matter race riots? I mean, I of course I, Christians believe that Black Lives Matter. I mean, Christians believe that there's no difference between men and women based on their color, right? That, that, has, that has nothing to do with the love of God for them or their value as a human being. But what about the race riots that came from that, from that argument? 
Is that something that that we're seeing the light from? I mean, what about all the, what about all the darkness that has come on this land? Um, that uh, that is real, serious darkness from leftists. How about how about the fact that it was it was a transgender leftist who shot up the last school down in Texas? How about the fact that the 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 police weren't allowed to go in? I mean, Republicans hate this. MAGA supporters hate this. They're not for that, right? I mean. I don't see, I don't not, I don't think people are seeing progress in America. I think, I think, I think that is an out of touch statement by Joe Biden. I don't think that that's what we're seeing. Light that will guide us forward, not only in words, but in actions, actions for you, for your children, for your grandchildren, for America. Even in this moment, with all the challenges we face, I give you my word as a Biden, I've never been more optimistic about America's future. Not your word as a Biden, is that, is that... <laughs> word as a biden what the biden family like we know this from from you know and we could we could talk about this maybe on another episode but we know that the biden family is one of the most corrupt government cronies that have ever existed like this is this is why he what there was no one really enthusiastic about him even when he was running for president <laughs> my word as a biden uh dude nobody thinks that that's incredibly special it's not like the biden name is known as the most honest name in the country um you know <laughs> come on because it may be because of who you are we're gonna end cancer as we know it mark my words we're yeah okay all right that's good right it'd be wonderful if we could end cancer trump wanted to do that it didn't get done every president has wanted to end cancer right this is great this is wonderful right if you could do it go for it right I'm all for you. I will support you ending cancer, Joe. But are you really going to end cancer, Joe? Are you you really think? <laughs> like the, all right. So here's the deal, guys. If Joe Biden does not end cancer by the next election, uh, then you should not vote for him because he's promised he's going to end cancer, and uh, he he lied on his word as a Biden. He promised he's going to end cancer. <laughs> On his word as a Biden. So he's definitely going to do it, guys. We're going to create definitely. millions of new jobs in a clean energy economy. We're going to think big. We're going to make the 21st century another American century because the world needs us to. You, you've been working to keep, get America off the world stage and to downplay our influence in the world. <laughs> and you're going to make the next century an American century. Yeah, that sounds great. It sounds conservative what you're saying, Biden. But but your policies are are the direct opposite of that. So why should we think that you you mean that? That's where we need to focus our energy, not in the past, not on divisive culture wars, not on the politics of grievance. But you've literally been participating in the culture war in this speech. You literally said that oh they own, um, you know the the MAGA Republicans all they want is to take us backwards into uh, no choice for women and and you know. Taking away abortion, you know, that's culture war. That's culture war stuff. Divis divisive, divisive culture war. This whole speech has been a divisive part of the culture culture war. So, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a lie. You just said you didn't want it, and you, you just spent the last twenty minutes doing it. In a future we can build together. The MAGA Republicans believe that for them to succeed, everyone else has to fail. No. <laughs> MAGA means make America great again, Joe. So we, we <laughs> believe just the opposite. We believe that we succeed when <laughs> when the country succeeds. Like when we succeed, we the the MAGA idea is that when they succeed, when when Trump succeeds, the whole country does well. It, it's not like oh they're going to succeed, so everything else fails. That's no, that's not that's not how. It's not the view of the MAGA people, right? I'm not a MAGA person. I wouldn't call myself that. Um, but I'm, I'm not against them either. So kind of try to be middle ground. I'm definitely conservative. And that's just not, the, not their view. That's not the view of the MAGA people. They believe America, not like I believe about America. I believe America is big enough for all of us to succeed. Somebody misread his <laughs> teleprompter there. Uh, I believe America is big enough for all of us to succeed. Um, yeah, if, if America succeeds, it's good for all of us, which is why the MAGA people want to make America great again, right? Whether they're right or wrong on how to do that, them wanting to do that is not 
<laughs> it's not against that. It's and that is the nation we're building, a nation where no one is left behind. I ran for president because I believe we're in a battle for the soul of this nation. I still believe that to be true. I believe the soul is the breath, the life, and the essence of who we are. The soul is what makes us us. The soul of America is defined by the sacred proposition that all are created equal in the image of God, that all are entitled to be treated with decency, dignity, and respect, that all deserve justice and a shot at lives of prosperity and consequence, and that democracy, democracy must be defended, for democracy makes all these things possible. <laughs> Folks. And it's up to us. Democracy begins and will be preserved in we, the people's habits of the heart, in our character, optimism that is tested yet endures, courage that digs deep when we need it, empathy that fuels democracy, the willingness to see each other not as enemies, but as fellow Americans. <laughs> Joe, you just spent the entire speech talking about how the, the enemies of America, the enemies of America are the people who support your political opponent. Like those are the enemies of America. But we need to see each other not as enemies, guys, not as enemies, but as fellow Americans, guys, we've got to come together. You just said that everyone who supports your political opponent, Trump, um, are the enemies of America. You know, not, not like you have any anything invested in and tearing down your political opponent. And then you put, oh, we got to come together and not see each other as enemies. That's funny. That's funny, Joe. Look, our democracy is imperfect. It always has been. Notwithstanding those folks you hear on the other side there, they're entitled to be outrageous. This is a democracy. There we go. Okay. All right. I agree with that. They are entitled to say and do what they're saying and doing. But you are... <laughs> Literally saying that they're like the enemy of democracy, um, but they're entitled to do that because it's a democracy. Well, which is it, Joe? Which one? But history and common sense. Good manners is nothing they've ever suffered from. But history and common sense tell us that opportunity, liberty, and justice for all are most likely to come to pass in a democracy. We have never fully realized the aspirations of our... A democratic republic, not a democracy. But go ahead. Founding. But every generation has opened those doors a little bit wider to include more people who have been excluded before. My fellow Americans, My America fellow Americans. is an idea. The most powerful idea in the history of the world. And it beats in the hearts of the people of this country. It beats in all our hearts. It unites America. It is the American creed, the idea that America guarantees that everyone be treated with dignity. It gives hate no safe harbor. It installs in everyone the belief that no matter where you start in life, there's nothing you can't achieve. That's who we are. That's what we stand for. That's what we believe. And that's precisely what we're doing opening doors, creating possibilities, focusing on the future, and we're only just beginning. Our task is to make our nation free and fair, just and strong, noble and whole. And this work is the work of democracy, the work of this generation, it is the work of our time, for all time. We can't afford to have, leave anyone on the sidelines. We need everyone to do their part. So speak up, speak out, get engaged, vote, vote, vote. And if we do our duty, if we do our duty in 2022 and beyond, then ages still to come will say, we, all of us here, we kept the faith. We preserved democracy. 
We heeded our worst. We, we heeded not our worst instincts, but our better angels. We, we proved that for all its imperfections. Oh, Joe, you're America doing so still- good. Oh, man. That was like super motivating there, man. And then I <laughs> couldn't read the, read the teleprompter. Oh, man. Just when you sounded like, you know, you knew what you were talking about. The beacon to the world, an ideal to be realized, a promise to be kept. There's nothing more important, nothing more sacred, nothing more American. That's our soul. That's who we truly are. And that's who must, we must always be. I have no doubt, none, that this is who we will be and that we'll come together as a nation that will secure our democracy, that for the next 200 years, we'll have what we had the past 200 years, the greatest nation on the face of the earth. We just need to remember who we are. We are the United States of America. Did he just say, for the next 200 years, we'll have what we had for the past 200 years? <laughs> did he say, did, did he just, did he, did he just say that we want to make America great again? <laughs> and not so many words. I think he kind of said that. Like, here's the thing. He's standing in front of independent. By the way, that's the end of the speech, really. Um, he's standing in front of Independence Hall <laughs> because he wants to make America. He wants to, he wants to have the image that he wants America to be the way that it was founded to be. He's literally saying that he wants America, you know, to be great again. I mean, not literally, but he, he's in it. it in so many words saying, I want America to be great again, but those MAGA people who want America to be great again, they want us to go backwards and not forwards. Well, you just said you want to go backwards. You're standing in front of Independence Hall. You're talking about the Constitution. Which is it? None of this makes sense, but unfortunately, Democrat voters are used to politicians who don't make sense and haven't, don't care to actually think through these things. Guys, Christians should be thinkers. We should think through these things. Be careful, be, think, be thinking, and that's all the time we have for today, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Point of View.